Hello, we are live. Today is Saturday, September 16, 2017, and I have with me Angie, hey, uh, Christine, Don, Gabriel, uh, Marlene, Michelle, Selesh, and starting today is Jonathan C. Martin from UK. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, everyone. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on, Max. Everyone, thanks for letting me be part of this. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you for thank you for coming. Yes. Uh, what should we do? Do we have any topic today? I think there is a lot of topics and a lot of changes. So I guess that would be the topic. Do you have anything else which you wanted to say? Do you have any announcements? Uh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, nothing particularly. Um, yeah, you just um, we'll just see what comes through. There's there's a lot of changes and shifts going on at the minute, as I'm sure most people are aware. We're all going through a lot of challenges and upgrades, and it seems the. The further we are on a path, the more intense the challenges get. So if you're going through some intense challenges, you're not alone at the minute. <laughs> uh huh. And um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think um, I, I'll, I'll probably channel the yell unless we have any specific requests, or maybe someone else will come through. There's been some other energies in me lately, so we'll see what comes through. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, great. great. Okay, now we got an echo. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so, yeah, any, any, anybody, any, anyone else wants anybody else to invite? Uh, you know, I'm inviting an invitation from the audience. Do you want anyone else to to come in addition to Yael? Or any questions or topics before we start? Yeah, my announcements are usual. We are doing Saturday webinars. Next Saturday webinar is uh, Jim's. He's planning to make it. Um, the, we have the recordings of the workshop almost already uh, uploaded into the video store on Vimeo. So we are starting to um, sell those recordings at an affordable subscription price soon. I, I think maybe in a, in a week or so we will uh, start them. So the workshop recordings will be up, and the next workshop is in February. Uh, the program starts February 1, but people can come one day in advance. And the price is in the range of $550. We didn't finalize it yet. Um, and it is in Sedona, and it goes for five nights, February 1 for, to February 6. And Jim and I will be teaching the usual stuff, which is um, channeling, telepathy, galactic reiki, Reiki and related things. And we will be working on vortexes in Sidon as well. I think that's all we have for now. I, I think we are ready to start. If you, yeah. If you, if you want, I can give you a chant for, for starters. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Max. I need a bit of tuning in. All right. Uh, the chant is intended for starting the good energies. I Thank you, Max. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll go into the channeling state and I will bring through the yeah yell, but when we get talking, if anyone has any requests for me to bring through someone else, 
I often bring through other entities as well. So I may be able to connect with someone else for you if you have any specific requests. So we'll probably go straight into the YAL, I should imagine. So good. I spoke yesterday to dolphins through through Jim. That was great. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you on the other side. See you there. Good day, I'll say. We are like Yael. I'll say welcome to our pitch, to our frequency, our domain of registration of awareness within the one infinite creator of the time space continuum. We call this co creation here in the planet Earth realm of existence. We welcome you to our dimension, to our frequency, to our expression of the one infinite creator of all that is. We invite you to join us in this frequency, to join us in this dimension. To join, in this, join us in this domain, the domain of awareness of who we are, of what it is we are co-creating together in this moment, of what it is we desire in our hearts to get from this transmission, and to be in that energy of allowing, allowing what needs to come through to come through, and knowing, in a sense, that all things relevant for us come to us in good timing, in perfect timing. When we need to hear a person, a, a specific thing, it tends to come through exactly when we need to hear it, exactly in the way we need to accelerate our consciousness to a new level of awareness, a new, new level of dimensional spacious being, spacious consciousness of who and what it is we truly are. So we invite you in this time to align with your calling, align with your purpose, align with the frequency of who you are, the frequency of joy, the frequency of bliss, the frequency of ecstasy, the frequency of letting go, letting go to all things you are holding on to, all things associated with your past and your future, and understand that there is only now, there is only this present moment, there is only the co-creation of all existence happening here and now, on different frequencies, on different timelines, different aspects of the co-creator, but all here and all now, all coexisting alongside you and inside you as you. For you are the one. You are the one infinite creator of all time, all space, all awareness, all beingness, all things, all consciousness, all things beyond, all things you can imagine to be. It's all you. It's all here. It's all now. As you. For you are the one. You are the creator. You are the formless and you are the form. You're the dimensional space in which all things are created. You're the dimensional space in which all things come into existence. You are the space in which all creation is birthed. And we share with you now the knowing and the understanding in your hearts that you are, for some of you, going through traumatic times, a time of transition, a time of separation from the old world into the new. And those things that are out of alignment with you, those things, those circumstances, those emotions, those beliefs, those aspects of yourself you're still holding on to, that are no longer in alignment, in truth, of your being, of who you truly are, are coming to the surface, are coming to the fore, or purging for realigning, for redefining. And we understand this is a traumatic time. This is a tumultuous time for many of you, as those things that you held dear to your hearts, that you wish to create in your reality, those dreams, those expectations, those desires that weren't truly in alignment with who you truly are, are coming to the fore. They're being purged to the surface. As your frequency rises, as you go through this accelerated period of consciousness, as we cross the equinox period next week, there will be a purging. There will be a dramatic shift. There will be timeline shifts for many of you. But now is a time of choosing. 
Now is the timing of letting go. It's time to let go of the old. It's time to embrace the new. Those things which cause you pain, those things which cause you suffering, that you are holding on to because you believe they can bring you some joy in your life. You believe you can garner something from them. The very idea that they are causing pain and suffering in your consciousness is part and parcel of the understanding from a higher perspective that they are nothing to do with who you are. They are nothing to do with why you came here. They are nothing to do with your true core vibration, your true core vibration of frequency of love, of joy, bliss, expansive, compensation for being someone you are not. Is not compensation for being who you are. For being who you are is letting go. It's living in the here and now. As the bliss and the ecstasy that you are. In your heart of hearts. In your true core being. Letting go of all expectations. Letting go of all needs. Letting go of all desires that come from a place of lack. That come from a place of misunderstanding of who you are. And why you are here. And what it is that truly brings you fulfillment. Truly brings you joy. Expansion. Creativity. Awareness of the being of creation, all these old ideas that are no longer serving you, no longer building the bridge to the new realm, to the new dimension, are coming up for letting go. Because you are entering into a new world. You have come to a critical point in the conscious evolution of your planet. You are stepping into the reality that all of you truly desire, truly desire to manifest. The reality that you all came here to birth. The reality that you all came here to be part of the co-creation. This reality is unfolding. This is what you came for, Earth humans. The party is beginning. It's just getting started. This is the beginning. The beginning of the new earth. The beginning of the new world. The beginning of the new frequency. Sometimes referred to as a fourth density reality. A fifth dimensional existence. The new age, the age of Aquarius. There have been many names that describe this transition you are going through. But it is happening. It is now. It is everything you have all been working towards. And it is happening. But as it shifts, you are realizing that you have to let go. You have to let go. You have to let go of those vibrational frequencies. For this timing is critical. You must let go. You must see that they no longer serve you. You must see that they are merely parts of your conditions, mindset, your belief systems handed down to you from your past civilization, from your teachers, parents, co workers, associates, friends, lovers children even, ideas that are no longer relevant to the existence of your consciousness in this realm of planetary awareness. They are old beliefs. This is why they feel bad. This is why they churn up inside you, because they're not real. They're not real for who you are. They're not real for the reality you're shifted into. And they're not real in any true aspect of existence that is grounded in the love and the light of creation, in the love and light of who you truly are. So. See them for this. See them as merely misidentified perceptions of reality, misaligned beliefs in the nature of creation, misunderstandings about what brings you joy, what brings you bliss, what brings you ecstasy. Well, is this not what you desire? Is this what is causing the miscode? You desire bliss. You desire ecstasy. You desire joy. You desire freedom. But you define that you can garner these ecstasy these experiences, these expressions of creation from places that you cannot create them, from things that will not bring you this. And this is what is causing the pain. This is what is causing the struggle and the strain and the strife. Holding on to these beliefs that say, I will be happy when. I will be happy when this happens. If this happens, if it doesn't, I won't be happy. And these are the ideas that are causing you the pain. It's not the idea that you're not getting what you wish. It's the idea that these things can't bring you the joy you think they can. Not in the way you think they can. So you need to surrender. You need to surrender your hearts to the higher aspect of yourself. The higher aspect of your being. The higher aspect of your consciousness that knows, that is. Eternal. Life. Consciousness. Awareness. Bliss. Intermediary experiences within this expression of discordant vibrations that no longer resonate are time to be purged and purging the art. And this is the turmoil, this is the upheaval you are experiencing inwardly and outwardly because outwardly is an expression 
a reflection of your inner state of being, your inner state of consciousness. And as many of you go through a purging inwardly, emotionally, physically, mentally, working through belief systems, identifying those parts of yourself that are not true, not real to who you are, not preferential to your state of consciousness, they are coming to the surface. And so too, they are reflected in your outer reality. You are seeing acts labeled as terrorism, natural disasters, storms, earthquakes, whirlwinds, gravitational fields being disrupted by the Earth's geomagnetic reaction to the sun's solar eruptions. These are all reflections of the purging that is going on in each and every one of you. But as you come to this period, of understanding who you are, of realigning with why you're here, of redefining the reality you say you wish to live in. There comes a time when you've got to let go. You've got to get these things out on the surface so you can see them, so you can see who you are, see why you are here, see what you prefer, see what is truly in alignment with who you are, and let go of the rest. And this isn't akin to what is being reflected in your outer reality. You're getting the opportunity to see all the parts that you do not desire to hold on to inwardly reflected back to you in all the parts you do not wish to consciously co-create on your planet outwardly. And it's an orchestration. It's a time for looking at what you prefer in your reality, reality building bridges to those parts of your civilization that feel alienated, that feel scared, that feel lost, that feel lonely and are lashing out in fear, in anger, because they know not where to look. They know not where to hide. They know not how to deal with what they are going through. In the same way, those emotions in your body are coming up in the same way. And as you heal these aspects of yourself, you will begin to understand how you can heal these aspects in your outer reality. And you will shift into this harmonious fourth density golden age of love and light you all say you wish to shift into. So this would be our sharing. This would be our understanding. And we offer this with compassion and heartfelt sadness, in a sense, for the way some of you are struggling in your reality at this time. But we love you. And while we do not experience sadness in the way you do, we experience compassion and understanding for the energies many of you are going through on your planet as you go through this dramatic shift into a fourth density golden age of love and light. But no, this is the shift you came for. No, this is the dawning of the new age. No, this is the letting go of that which does not serve you to make way for that which does. And those of you that have chosen to be on this path, letting go you will, one way or the other, you will get through it. We know, we see, we love, we generate our heartfelt consciousness from our reality into your dimension. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Shiva. And we will, if we wish, enter into a question and answer modality of consciousness, if you have any questions. I guess I go I guess. first. Hi. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for your uh, sharing. Uh, thank you. We, last time I spoke to you before the workshop, and in the workshop we did the classes for telepathy, and I know Yayela very strong in telepathy so can you give me any more um, guidance how to how to learn telepathy how to guide the classes what is there to study because I know the theory but you know when it comes to practice some people are really talented and they can read the minds and some people are not so what what can we do to improve it we would suggest open up your hearts for as we understand it telepathy issues from the heart is sometimes referred to by the Bashar as telepathy, from the idea that empathy is key, empathic connection with your fellow humans, love, understanding, generosity, compassion, willingness to embrace the ideas of all beings in your planet and understand unconditionally that they are coming from what aspect they understand to be, from that part of creation that they understand as themselves and the way they can live their lives and understand that all beings, in a sense, are operating out of love, the need for love, the desire for love. But so many beings on your planet are lost. And when you can come to understand that these beings that are lost on your planet are merely confused, 
merely lost, merely lost in this dimension, nothing to grasp hold of, nowhere to find their way back to who they are. You can come to share unconditional love for them. And this is the key. This is the key for the evolution of your whole planet into a collective consciousness modality of being, which is where you are headed. You are becoming, as described in the Law of One series, known as the social memory complex, the idea of a collective consciousness, a collective mind, where you are all connected through your heart space, through love, through grounding, compassion, realization that you are one, that the beings you label as other are you. As you come to love unconditionally all beings, you come to see that that love is you and those other beings are you. And this is the sharing we would offer. This is the wisdom we would garner, you understand. The idea that telepathy issues from the heart. The heart is key. The heart's call, the heart's calling. When you are fully vulnerable, fully empty of contraction, those barriers that the physical mind puts up around you to keep you safe, to let others not know your vulnerabilities, let others not know who you are, let others not know your deepest, darkest secrets, this is when a true heart-based telepathic realization, reality will birth. But well, the idea is you are all beginning to line with your heart space. You are, many of you, most of you, all of you in a sense, experience from time to time the idea of telepathic transmission, tuning into others' frequencies, others' vibrations, sensing before someone texts you, you know that consciousness comes into your mind. When someone's thinking about you, you connect. All of a sudden, you see an image of someone you know in your mind. This is because you are connecting on some level. These are the beginnings of the shift to a collective memory consciousness, a social memory complex. But the idea is that you all have blocks up. You're all, in a sense, already capable of becoming this fourth density social memory complex, this collective memory consciousness. You have, in a sense, already shifted into the fourth, fourth density reality, the fifth dimensional awareness. And this heart-centered telepathic communication is available to all of you now, really. But the idea is you're all blocking it out. You're all putting your defenses up. You're all putting a barrier in front of the information coming in because you're not letting your information out. You're all closing your hearts down. Well, you know, you feel, you sense, if I open up my heart, I'm vulnerable. If I open up my heart, people will see who I am. They'll see all my secrets. They'll see all my beliefs in lack of self-worth. All my vulnerability. All my secret fears about being rejected, being thrown out of society, not being worthy of love, being small, being worthless. All these ideas that you humans hold on to that have nothing to do with who you truly are. Nothing to do with why you are here. You don't want anyone to see this. You're holding on to these beliefs and you don't want to see them for yourselves. And you definitely don't want anybody else to see them because if anyone else can see them, then you can definitely see them. You can't hide any longer if everyone knows they're all true. And this is the fear. The fear that it might be true that I'm not worthy. The fear that it might be true that I don't deserve love. The fear that it might be true that I'm not a worthy, loving being, deserving of all the love of creation. And it's the coming to see that these beliefs are not true. Coming to see who you are, that you are created out of the love and the light of the one infinite creator, created in this form to express in exactly this way, and the love and unconditional love of the one infinite creator birthed you into this form, into this exact perfect form, to experience exactly what you are perfectly experiencing. So, if the one infinite creator sees you as a perfect being, deserving of her, his, hers unconditional love, to experience exactly what you're experiencing, why would you argue with creation? Why would you say, I don't deserve unconditional love, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, 
And when you see that these beliefs are not true, you can let down your guards. You can let open up the shutters. You can be vulnerable. And this is really what it takes to be vulnerable. For there is great strength in vulnerability. For when you are vulnerable, you know that you do not need to be strong, as you have defined strong. But the way you have defined strong has nothing to do with being strong. The way you have defined strong from our perspective is being weak. For you say, I need to be strong. I need to stop people seeing who I am. I need to fight for survival. I need to do this and this and this to stop people destroying me, to stop people getting inside me. I need to protect myself. But this is weakness. This is saying, I am weak. I believe I am weak. So I must do something to stop people from getting at my weakness. When you become truly vulnerable, when you let people see who you are, when you open up to all your deepest, darkest fears and emotional imbalances to allow others to assist you with the healing, the transmutation of these vibrational energies, you will come to see that this is where true strength emanates from. You will come to see that you are untouchable. You will come to see that you are invincible. You will come to see that you are eternal beings of love and light and nothing can ever touch you. And the power of vulnerability, the power of letting people into your hearts is so powerful you can't imagine. When you become one with the love and connect truly from your heart, let down your defenses, open up, people see who you truly are. You might actually find people actually love you for who you truly are. In fact, we will assure you they will. But if they love themselves as they truly are, they will love you for who you truly are because you will be on the same frequency of understanding of the unconditional love all beings in creation deserve. So we would suggest this is the secret to let down your guards. For telepathic communication issues from the heart, telepathy is a heart-based consciousness. It's about opening up, letting others in. You can't have a telepathic communication if you don't let anyone else in. For it's about shifting to the same frequency, becoming one consciousness. In a way, you can't read other people's minds. You can only operate on the same frequency and experience the same thoughts at the same time. And this requires you to let the other being in. And of course, for them to let you in. But you need to take the first step. You need to let down your guard. You need to say, this is who I am. Okay. I have some healing to do. I have some issues that are out of alignment. But I love myself. But I understand that this is what I came here to experience. I understand that we came here as an earth-based civilization to explore every avenue of creation, every corner of darkness, every corner of limitation that could we possibly be experienced in our third density reality. And with that, we took on the beliefs that we are unworthy, not deserving of love, not deserving of creating the reality, separate from creation, lost, deserted, abandoned, all these beliefs that have nothing to do with who you truly are, nothing to do with your core vibration of knowing that you are infinite beings of worthy of unconditional love, worthy of all abundance of creation, because the creator created you from this perspective that you are loved, you are desired to be created in this form. So if the one infinite creator loves you unconditionally, why would you argue with creation? We suggest you stop, we suggest you let go. Let go of this nonsense, all these old beliefs. Redefine, realign, let down your shutters, let the fellow humans in, open up your hearts again. For it's the shutting down, it's the closing out that's causing the pain, not the letting in. You may feel some turbulence as you begin to open your hearts, you begin to let down your, shut your guards, you begin to become vulnerable. Because you will see what you've been suppressing, what you've been holding in for so long will come to the surface. For purging, for realigning, redefining, and it can be very painful for some of you. It can be very painful, we understand. But this is the way forward. You cannot suppress these. You cannot shut them in the closet any longer because your, your vibration or collective frequency on your planet is becoming too high. So it's a case of bringing these to the surface realigning, redefining, letting go, letting others in, connecting from a true heart space of love and compassion and understanding and vulnerability and willingness to let people see who you truly are 
And when you let people see who you truly are, they will reflect back to you then seeing who they truly are. And this is the secret to a telepathic communication. It really is that easy. You can do it just like that. But we understand it's a process of letting go and letting in. Does this help? You're muted, Max. Okay, thank you. And Mish is next. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Max. <laughs> Uh, we pretty much have touched on every single thing that's wrong in my life already, so, um... Not wrong, perfect. <laughs> fine, fine. See, this is what perfect, you perfect and uncomfortable. Yes, yes, out of alignment, ready, yeah. right for redefining, right for realigning, but not wrong, oh, perfect, but this is what you came to explore, this is what you came to create. All of creation is perfect, but... What you not prefer, we say, yes, you do not prefer. Time for realigning, time for redefining, time for letting go, time for becoming who you are. Yeah, so I have gone from um, a few shifts of uh, being in the knowing, knowing that the universe supports me and being completely, um, I don't know how to describe that feeling. It's just a beautiful feeling to fear-based old stuff coming re-emerging um like i feel really unsafe right now um and intellectually and and intellectually i know that it is not necessary you know and know some methodologies to move past that etc but i'm having some real difficulty shifting um and i i guess i would just ask if you could tap into my energy we've met before from where i was maybe in a better place to where i am now and offer a, some practical human suggestions for like moving shifting this energy in the most rapid way possible. Very good, thank you. So, you are feeling unsafe. So, you are beginning to feel vulnerable, yes? Very. And as we said, vulnerability is great. Vulnerability is good. But the idea is, in that vulnerability, you are starting to see, you are starting to open up, let beings in, let your true consciousness in, connect to more of who you truly are, let your true self come to the surface and be vulnerable. And this is wonderful, this is beautiful. And this is the part of the transmit transition into this new age of awareness, expansion. But the idea is that in that vulnerability, you hold on to beliefs that are still discordant, still out of alignment what you, with what you truly are. The idea that you can be hurt, you can be harmed, you can be affected by things in your outer reality. But understand, the outer reality does not affect you. You affect your outer reality. You are your outer reality. All external circumstances are not really external at all. They all exist within your consciousness. You are the infinite. You are the eternal. Eternal. You are the untouchable. You are the immortal one. So what can harm you? What can hurt you? All these things out there that you say, this could hurt me. This person could hurt me. This experience could damage me. This creation could affect me. All these things are created by you. They all exist within you. So how could anything cause you harm? How could you be unsafe from an object within you? Because you are the creator of the object. You are beyond the objects. They have no beingness without you. Does this make sense? Yes, it makes sense, but I could harm myself via self-destructive tendencies, let's say. Well, you could harm your physical body, but you could not harm yourself. I see. Yourself is immortal, untouchable, eternal. Right. The consciousness within, are you aware of the concepts that you create your reality within your own consciousness? Yes. 
all right? But you still have fear associated with the idea of harm being caused to your physical body, yes? Mm. A lot of, uh, there's just a lot of external circumstances that are really mentally and physically taxing happening currently. And I find that instead of, um, my vibration just seems to be plummeting. That's pretty much it because I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for identifying. Would you be willing to share with us any specifics, any of the specific circumstances that are causing this discord in your vibrational field that we may help you alleviate the symptoms, help you move through? Sure. Um, so I spent a number of months um, doing caretaking for a friend and I came home to my apartment that I hadn't been in in several months and it is infested with bed bugs. <laughs> Which means that literally almost every waking moment of my life involves steaming something, washing something, drying something, quarantining something, spring I don't know it is an ungodly amount of work and it's all about stuff and so I'm caught in this cycle of trying to quote unquote save stuff or whatever and also not and be safe so I don't like take it anywhere with me but I don't live in a household where anyone else really cares and then that brought up anger for me. And then I reflected on this and said, yeah, but look at this situation, Michelle. You also have not cared about X, Y, and Z, so there, this is merely a reflection. However, it's just, um, I'm, I've been letting the sheer, exhausting, monotonous, um, unpleasant, own, allowing myself to get angry um, just decimate my soul basically <laughs> that's what it feels like all right thank you so so you're you're getting bitten while you are sleeping yes um uh, i'm doing I'm doing a, I'm in a much better place than say my roommate and the rest of the house because I wasn't here for five months and because I'm really fastidious, but I literally have nowhere to go. I don't have a means of income. I don't know what to do next. And when I have many, many things happening at once, or at least this has been the story of my life, my brain kind of shuts down. All right. All right. Very good. What we suggest if you wish to stop getting bitten while you are dreaming, we suggest you wake up out of the dream. So in a sense, this is a reflection of the time these bed bugs are in a sense saying, you've been sleeping too long. You've been dreaming too long. It's time to wake up. We're going to keep biting you until you wake up. Wake up from the illusion. Wake up for the illusion that you can be affected by outer circumstances. Wake up from the dream into the realization that you are the creator of your reality. You are the creator of your time-space equation. It's time to wake up. It's time to remember that you are the creator. It's time to stop telling yourself the story. You say this is the story of your life. It's time to redefine the story. It's time to rewrite the story. Because all these things are a reflection of your inner state of being. Mm -hmm. And we understand, yes, that they can, in a sense, create a feedback loop where you see your outer reality, you say, oh, this is terrible. Oh, there's bed bugs everywhere. Oh, my life is so crazy. Oh, I'm so exhausted. Oh, this is the story of my life. And you see it reflected out to back to you and you continue telling the story. So it can, in a sense, amplify it. But the idea is that that outer reality has no effect on your inner reality. And your inner reality creates your outer reality. So it's a case okay. of shifting your frequency. Okay. This is a great potential time for transmutation. This is a great potential time for transformation. You need to redefine your inner beliefs, your inner state of consciousness. You need to come to see that you create your outer reality. You need to see that you create your dream. 
This is your dream, your dream of consciousness. And you need to begin to shift your vibrational frequency inwards. We would suggest... Please, we, we say? Such as? Yes, well, the idea is you need to raise your frequency. You need to change your inner state of being to a state of harmony, to a state of peace, to a state of higher consciousness, enjoyment, relaxation, and your outer reality will shift to reflect your inner state. Does this make sense? Of course it makes sense, and I understand this. I'm just having a hard time doing it. All right, very good. We understand this is extremely challenging on your planet. This is why you came here to, to embark upon one of the most extreme challenges in creation. And this is why we view your civilization as a kind of master class, as a kind of graduate school, to take you to the next level of your spiritual evolution. It's one of the places in creation where you can accelerate at the fastest of rates due to these extreme challenges. We understand it can be very challenging. So we share with you some ideas, some permission slips that you may have heard us share in the past, that you may have heard the Bashar share in the past. The idea of following your excitement, the idea of following your dreams. For when you follow on your side, when you act upon your excitement, moment to moment to the best of your ability, whenever you can throughout your day, working with your belief systems, if you believe that you cannot be supported abundantly financially in a certain embarkation, we understand you honor that belief, even though we would suggest that it's only the belief that's creating that. When you fully understand that you are the creator of your reality and you are the creator of your dreams, you can come to understand that your beliefs define your reality. Your beliefs create your reality. So if you truly believe that you could do anything you wish, you could act upon your highest excitement and believe and fully trust it that you would be supported, the abundance would flow to you. The means would flow into your reality to allow you to pursue that path further and further and further. This is what you would create. But we understand this is a process of redefining your beliefs. So honor your beliefs, look at your beliefs, see how can I change my reality? How can I act upon my joy, act upon my excitement more to the best of my ability today, this day, and act upon it? And carry this out in a moment-to-moment -moment scenario. Say, upon waking tomorrow, if you have the ability to step out of your usual regime, step out of your usual set of repetitive circumstances that you have been stuck in for such a long time. It's a case of taking a few leaps of faith, seeing, okay, I understand that I'm the creator of my reality. It all feels a bit daunting to me. It all feels a bit scary to jump off the edge of the cliff and trust I will be supported, but I do not need to do that. I can see from a higher perspective, I know in my heart I create my reality. So I'm going to start taking baby steps. I'm going to take a few small, a few small leaps of faith in the direction of my joy, in the direction of my excitement, in the direction of my calling and alignment with who I am, why I'm truly here. And as you begin to do this moment to moment throughout the day, let go of the repetitive cycles, let go of the desperate need to keep washing those bed sheets, because you are, in a sense, keeping yourself stuck in a cycle, a washing cycle, going round and round and round and round and round and feeling like a washing machine inside and not going, knowing where to go. And understand that you can create your reality energetically. The idea of actually washing the sheets is a small part and parcel. You need to wash your inner sheets. You need to clean your inner linen. You need to clean yourself out. You need to wash yourself out. You need to change your vibration. Because vibration is what creates your outer reality. You can only affect your tiny portion of your domain with your physical hands by washing those sheets. You need to clean your inner reality. So perhaps next time you think, oh my gosh, these bed bugs are everywhere. What am I going to do? I've got to clean every sheet in the house and smoke every corner. And I'm going to be here for a thousand, thousand years. Realize that this belief is creating your reality. And say to yourself, no, I know I create my reality. No, I know I create my dream. I'm going to step out of this repetitive pattern. I'm going to step into the dimensional awareness that I create my reality. Say, no, I'm not even going to wash those sheets because I create my vibrational reality through my own consciousness. And if I merely step outside of this repetitive reality, well, the idea is that when you continue over these patterns and patterns and patterns, day to day to day, you're attracting more of them to you. When you 
it's like a cycle that keeps going round and round. You wake up and think, oh no, I've got to wash the sheets. Oh no, I've got to clean the house. Oh no, I've got to do this and this and this and this and this, but I don't prefer. This is the story of my life. Oh no, and then you wake up the next day and you say again, oh no, I've got to wash the sheets. Oh no, I've got to clean the house. Oh no, I've got to do this and this and this and this, and this is the story of my life. You understand that this is the vibrational frequency you're locked in, and this is what's creating your reality. And this is why this has been the story of your life, because it is the story of your life. It's a story you're telling yourself internally, and it's reflecting outwardly. So you need to change the story of your life. You need to start taking moments longer and longer as you gain trust and belief to step out of this pattern, this vibrational frequency, this story of your life you've created. And say to yourself, I'm going to create another story. I'm going to create a different experience in my reality through my vibrational frequency. I understand that I am the creator of my domain. I understand that this is created within my consciousness, vibrationally, from my inner state of being. So I am going to shift out of that old state of being that says this is the story of my life because I know that that is what's creating my life. I'm going to write a new story. I'm going to shift my vibrational frequency. And I'm going to drop the washing. I'm going out. I'm leaving it all. I trust my reality will be okay just for a few hours if I step outside of it and shift into a completely different vibrational frequency of doing something that feels exciting, that just doing something that feels joyful. And this will gain momentum, and this will gain a roll. And instead of being rolling, 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 rolling round in a dishwasher, washing the sheets, going round and round and round, and feeling stuck and spinning and head spinning, stuck in a washing machine of sheets and stuff you don't prefer, <laughs> you can escape that reality. And you can let go of the washer, and you can, can create... Just run away? <laughs> do you see what we're getting to? Do you see what we're pointing to? I do. But I but keep... Right, my right, highest right. joy is, like just leaving every single thing I own and walking away. <laughs> yes, That's and this what... is probably what we would suggest. But you've got to honor your beliefs. Do you believe you will be supported if you do that? I believe something will happen. I don't know what, but something will happen. <laughs> do you believe that will be bad? I don't think it will be bad. I think it will be so different. It might be exciting. You back? Um trying to be a grown-up and not be a jerk and leave all my stuff. Ah, so we see old patterns. Now we're getting somewhere. And do you believe that you would be a jerk and not be a grown-up? And is that a bad thing? Um, actually, I think this is even worse. I think the person to whom I would leave all my stuff deserves to have all of it. Not in a good way, but like you made this mess, you let it happen, you deal with it. <laughs> Perhaps that is their vibrational challenge. We would not suggest that any of you deserve negative frequencies, deserve, you all deserve love, you all deserve light. But in a sense, it could be his challenge. It could be exactly what he needs to elevate into the next level. But understand that when you are following your highest excitement, your highest joy, your bliss, your calling, moment to moment to the best of your ability without hesitation, without expectation, and knowing that you will be supported, if you believe you will be supported in your creation, you are aligning with your higher self. You are aligning with the reason you are here. You are aligning with your true nature. This is the idea of excitement. This is the idea of bliss, of joy, of creativity, of abundance, of expansion. It's the idea that when you are following your highest excitement, moment to moment, to the best of your ability, you are becoming who you are. You are aligning with your higher nature, your higher self, your higher mind, your higher consciousness, the true you, the you you came here to be. And when you are in aligned in this state, being who you came here to be, aligning with, aligning with your higher mind, your higher consciousness, your true self nature, you are of service to all of creation. You are of service to the whole. You are of service to yourself. But importantly, and listen to this one, everyone else associated with this choice you are making, it is always of service. When you are truly in full integrity, not coming from a fear-based belief, but truly in alignment with your excitement, not listening to fear, disguised as excitement, not listening to anxiety, disguised as excitement. Mm -hmm. When you are doing this, when you are truly aligned with your true heart's calling out of integrity, you are always of service to all beings in creation. So if you were to up and leave tomorrow morning and it wasn't from a place of running away, 
It wasn't from a place of fear about your old reality, but it did truly feel inspiring. It did truly feel exciting to move on, to explore a new area of creation, which we suggest it might be time. It might be time to let go of the washing machine and move into a new exploration of reality. Unless you want to experience washing sheets for the rest of your life, if that's truly your heart's design, your highest design, it wouldn't take that away from you. <laughs> However, we suggest that if it is truly inspirational for you to move away from this reality, to simply walk out in the knowing, in the understanding that you would be supported, you would create a reality that would support you, it would be of the highest good for all beings involved in this scenario. Because your highest calling, your highest excitement, your joy, your passion, your bliss, when truly aligned with your true nature, is always the best for all beings in creation and always the best for all beings involved in this circumstance. Does this make sense? Yes. Thank you. Because it may enable the person who's stuck in the house to unlock from his own patterns. Do you think he enjoys lying in bed being bitten all night long? He probably doesn't want to be there himself either. And perhaps you walking out and leaving, he might be, this is the final straw. I've had enough. I'm leaving too. I'm going. I don't care what happens to me. And he walks out. And he realizes that miracles can happen. That he can be supported. The very fact that his life became unbearable, that the one person that he was holding on to that thought might keep him happy, might keep him safe, has finally left him, might be the straw that broke the camel's back, might be the, the last thing that allowed him to let go of all the ideas of forcing himself to lie in bed at night, being bitten by bugs that are trying to wake him up from the dreams and set him free into a new reality. Does this help? Yes. yes. Thank you. Can we clarify? Would you like to share any? any? No, you can move on to the next person. Thank you. Thank so you very much. Thank you for sharing. Much love. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Shivai. Good day. Welcome. Who are we speaking to? Uh, David Jeremiah. Hello, David. How are you today? Well? Yes, I feel good. I am well. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. Welcome to our reality. How can we help you? How can we be of assistance to you? Much love. Um, I would um interested in uh, any guidance about um, my... Uh, my healing abilities and I've been wanting to connect um, to learn to, to channel and to connect with spirit to, to talk to angels or to do what what you are doing right now to be able to have somebody come through me and speak as you are speaking all right so you wish to learn to channel for yourself yes and I have been practicing and it has been working a little bit have you had someone sit down in front of you and ask you questions? Um, no. No, the training well, we just... Would be our tip. What was that? The idea is, this would be our tip, this would be our sharing. The idea okay. of actually getting another being in your physical reality to sit in front of you and ask you questions. Because this, in a sense, creates the circuit, creates the grounding. The idea is that when you have another being sat in front of you asking you questions, they are in a sense pulling the information through you. It's a lot easier to get out of your own way because they are in a sense creating a circuit. You literally become the conduit for the vibration of frequency. When you are in a sense asking yourself questions or writing, while this can be effective and many of you in your reality, do very successful at doing this and the channel can channel for himself and literally record into a video. It is in a sense harder because you are in a sense two parts of the circuit. You are the conduits and you are the ground. You are the energy channel, you are the wire and you are the grounding and you are trying to in a sense pull energy through yourself and ground it at the same point. So it can cause a blockage, it can cause a discord, a stuckness in the system but the idea is if you actually get someone to sit in front of you a physical being either ideally in physical reality but if you can't find someone in physical reality next best over the internet where you can see their face and connect with them strongly energetically it will create a circuit you will bring energy from source through a higher entity angel extraterrestrial guide if you wish to connect with one of these or directly from source down through you 
and out into the being answered the questions who is grounding the energy creating a circuit and this allows a much easier flow of energy does this make sense does this help yes so try this and let us know how it goes if we speak in the future okay and is there um what kind of things or what could you tell me about my healing building how how will i learn to advance more from where i'm at now and learn the things that will be um that i was told on will happen for my my path like i've heard lots of things from channelings of abilities and new things happening um how do i connect and learn these things well understand that the power lies within you you are a powerful healer for you are the creator of your reality in a sense you can heal any portion of your reality instantaneously but there are at this time on your planet blocks within yourselves blocks within other beings and it's a case of redefining your own beliefs that are blocking you from being your true self your true infinite potential and with time this will reflect back to you and the beings reflected in your reality will realign their beliefs and come back into alignment with who they are and when you reach a point in your reality when you truly know that you are the one infinite creator you are a pure vessel for god consciousness for love like beingness for the expression of creation you are the one infinite creating form and you come to a point where this is reflected back to you in your outer reality while the beings at least know to a high degree that they are the pure awareness that they are pure vessels in themselves this is where true healing will occur but it will be a belief held in both of you that you can heal instantaneously because you are the creators of your reality so you can co-create with the being to be a permission slip but in a sense you can't create in their reality you can't heal another being. You can only act as a reflection, a mirror, a permission slip for them to hear themselves. You can offer a vibrational frequency and say, hey, do you want to match my vibrational frequency? Does this vibrational frequency feel more preferential in your reality to the vibrational frequency you are holding on to at present? And give them the option to match your vibrational frequency and heal themselves. This is what will come over time. So know that you are already, in a sense, the perfect healer the perfect creator, the divine consciousness that can heal all reality. But understand that it is a process that you are all going through and we would suggest to you the idea of following your excitement moment to moment to the best of your ability will enable you to attract to you all the circumstances for you to redefine yourself, all the things you need to look at in yourself, to heal, to balance in yourself, to enable you to raise to a higher vibrational frequency of yourself, a truer expression of who you are and why you are here whilst at the same time attracting into you any tools any permission slips any knowledge any experiences that may give you a deeper understanding that may enable to you accelerate your path raise your own frequency in other ways the idea is that the idea of following your excitement moment to moment to the best of your ability is the complete kit that will attract everything in your reality to you necessary for the expression that you have called the healing modality does this help uh, yes, and, and and what is there anything that you see that I would focus on to release? Is there any blockages that that I can focus on to work on? Is there anything you see that you feel you need to release? Yeah. Yeah. There's... Would you care to share with us? What was that again? Would you care to share with us? Um. There's there's worries. There's things that come up that um, just cause worry and don't always know how to deal with it right away. All right. Well, we would suggest first and foremost, what is a worry? A worry is a fear. And what is a fear? A fear is a belief that has nothing to do with who and what it is you truly are. A fear is an indicator, a sign, a warning in a sense that you have a belief in your system that is out of alignment with who you truly are. That has nothing to do with you your true core vibration or frequency in this reality. It's the idea of redefining and realigning these beliefs. The idea is that when you feel these negative vibrations, which from our understanding all stem from fear on some level, they are all expression of fear. There are only, in a sense, two expressions of consciousness in creation, fear and love. And when you experience worry about something, 
fear about something? It is a sign that you have a belief that's out of alignment. You have a belief that needs redefining. You have a belief that has nothing to do with who it is you are and why you are here. So you need to look at that belief. Next time you sense worry coming up, next time you sense fear coming up, you need to say, what is happening in me? What is the belief that is generating this worry, that is generating this fear? And say to yourself, this belief, very, the very knowing that it creates fear in my sense, shows that this belief is not true to who I am. It's not aligned with my preference to create a love-like version of myself in this reality. And look at that belief and say, how can I redefine that belief? How can I realign that belief to bring back into alignment with the knowing that I am eternal, I am infinitely deserving of the love and the light of the one infinite creator, I am infinitely deserving of all the love in creation, I am infinitely deserving of all the abundance in creation, for well, creation has supported me thus far in a path that has been nothing to do with who I truly am. So why would the creation not support me? further in this reality in who i truly am and see that you are deserving of love you are deserving of light you are deserving of abundance you are deserving of wealth you are deserving of who you came here to be but why would you not be deserving of who you came here to be for creation birthed you into this reality to express in a certain form that is your excitement, that is your calling, that is your passion, that is your joy. Why would it not support you in that reality? It does not make sense. So look at these beliefs of lack of self worth, lack of deserving, where a lot of your fear based beliefs stem from in your reality, and say, How is this belief out of alignment with who I am, the knowing that I am worthy of all these things? and redefine it, retune it, bring it back into alignment. And then you will no longer feel this fear. You will no longer need the sign in the sense of fear that you have a belief that is out of alignment with who you truly are. Does this make sense? Does this help? Oh yeah, that was absolutely wonderful. That was, that was great. Thank you, Shiva. Much love, peace. Much love, Shiva. Welcome, good day. Uh, I'd like to ask the channeler um, a question the so oh, yeah. go, on. go ahead Hi. I've spoken to you before many times and so we've gone through this awakening and it's a constant thing to deal with your ego on a daily basis and I just find it very hard. My ego absolutely hates uh, this whole process. All right, quite humorous from our perspective, being that the ego really is the process. Like the mind believes it needs to create a process. I'm going to create this process for myself. And I'm going to beat myself up because it's not working. And I'm going to take a long time to realign myself. And I'm going to struggle with it. And why isn't it working? And I'm going to make it work, but it's not working. And why isn't it working? Because I'm not making it working. And who's it working? What's working? What? And it goes on and on. But the idea is that the process is really the transcendence of the need to process. But when you see that they're all just permission slips, these ideas, powerful and very valuable in your reality of redefining beliefs, following your excitement, following your joy, following your bliss, spiritual transmutation techniques. They are, in a sense, just permission slips. But you could, if you truly believed it, if you truly understand your power, your worth, your creatorhood, you could become who you are truly are instantaneously because you already are who you truly are. You do not need to create a process. You can just see that you are the one infinite creator in form. Know that you are the creator of your reality. Know that you are infinitely worthy of all the love and light in creation. Know that you are infinitely worthy of all the abundance relevant for your reality to create the life of your dreams. You can, in a sense, just say, I know this. I know it. And as soon as you know it, it is. It's as simple as that. So, in a sense, the ego, as you define it, what we would call the negative ego, for the ego, in a sense, is necessary for the creation of your reality. You couldn't have 
a physical human existence without some form of mind, ego, body to observe your reality. But we understand what you are saying, the idea of the negative ego, the parts of yourself that are out of alignment, who and what it is you truly are. It's complaining about the process being so hard. But that is the issue. It is creating a bubble reality for itself. It's saying, I need to go through this process, but this process is so hard. I'm sick of this process. Why isn't this process easier? Why doesn't this process just go away? When is this process going to be over? But that vibrational frequency, that perspective, is what needs to go away, is what needs to be dissolved, is what needs to be redefined and realigned, transmuted into the love and light of what it is you truly are. So when you're saying, this process is such a struggle, I don't like this process, why is it so hard? I'm sick of this process, when is it going to ever end? That is the process, that is what's never going to end. It's never ending because you're identified with the belief that it's never going to end. You're perpetuating it. When you see that that is what needs redefining, you need to redefine this voice, this ego, this belief that says, this process is so hard. I'm sick of this process. Redefine that to, wow, this process is bliss. This process is so easy. I just ride the wave of consciousness day to day. Sure, challenges come up, but they're exciting. So what? I'm becoming more of who I truly am. This is love. This is light. This is exactly what I came to experience. I love it. This is so exciting. We're riding the wave, the crescendo of consciousness into a new fourth density golden age and all things that are out of alignment with my being are coming up for purging and I see so clearly what they are not and who I am not and who they are no longer serve me. This is so exciting. This is bliss. I love this process. And when you love the process, the process is over. Do you see what we're pointing to? It's all a case of redefining, redefining your beliefs. If you define the process as being a struggle, as being negative, as being bad, as being hard work, and not liking it, you create that reality. But you create your reality. You define your reality. You are your reality. So all you have to do is change your definitions to, wow, this process is really quite exciting. It's a bit of a roller coaster. I'm always going up and down, but Hey, who doesn't love roller coasters? What a ride, what an experience. See things how your higher self sees it. For from a soul perspective, for from a higher self perspective, it is very much akin to the idea of a roller coaster. When you transition out of this reality, some of you say, why do I keep coming back? Why do I keep reincarnating on this earth? I don't like it. It's hell here. I hate it. I want to get out. But the idea is it's like the roller coaster ride. You're at the fair, you jump onto the roller coaster ride, and you're going up and down, and you're screaming, and you're exhilarated, and you're screaming, and you're terrified, and you're screaming, and you're joyful, and bliss, and peaceful, and serene, going to the top, and then you're going down, and you're terrified, and then you're off. And then it's all over, and you get off, and you go, wow, I want to get right back on there. And it's the idea with life, it's the idea with why you reincarnate. Because from your soul perspective, from your higher self perspective, this ride is enthralling, this ride is thrilling, this ride is exciting. And if you can come to see yourself from the perspective your higher self holds for this reality, that this is a joyous, expansive, thrilling, creative ride. I love this ride, I love this reality. It's such challenging, so challenging to my being. I'm expanding so fast. I'm garnering so much knowledge that it exists the expansion of my reality, it exists the expansion of all of creation. I love it, I love this dream. I love it. I'm going to have fun from now on. I'm not moping around. I'm not getting all discordant. I'm not getting all down in the dumps about my reality. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy this suffering. Look at that. I'm suffering. That's a sign that I have something that's out of alignment, that's discordant, and I need to bring it into my consciousness for redefining. This is exciting. I'm discovering who I'm not. I'm expanding. I'm transcending the old. Exciting, hey? It's all about definition. It's all about redefining your beliefs. Understanding that you create your reality and your inner state of being, your inner definitions, your inner beliefs, create your inner state of being and ultimately reflect outwardly. So redefine the lows as highs, become the rock ride, become the wave. 
Become the expansion of consciousness. Become one with all. Accept who you are. Dive in deep down. Become the vibration of struggle. Become the vibration of strife. See that it's all you. See that it's all bliss in form. See that it's all consciousness in form. Become one with the struggle. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the journey. It's not going to last forever. You're coming to the end of the idea of suffering. You're coming to the end of the idea of struggle and strife with your reality. So it's exciting. It's time to garner all you can. You will, in a sense, in this universe, never be able to experience such levels of darkness as you have over the past years. You're coming to a new dawning. So say to yourself, I'm going to extract so much wisdom out of these last months and years of this journey, of this transition, that it will expand my consciousness so much, that it will add so much to my soul's journey and the understanding of the one infinite creator about how to ride the wave of transformation, about how to bring more love, bliss and joy into my reality and understand the great service you are offering all creation by being willing to come into these vibrations that you do not prefer and say, I'm going to enjoy these last few months. For I know that this is who I am. This is why I came here. This is exactly what I came to experience. This tumultuous transformation, we knew it was going to happen. We looked forward to it from our soul perspective. And we're going to enjoy it. We're going to garner all we can from the last bumpy vibrations on this ride. Does this help? Does this share a different perspective on how we can create our reality together. Can we expand? Is there, would you she, like she more assistance? She has dropped off the call for a minute. All right. There's a couple Please. of questions from... Um, YouTube. Krellick uh, wanted to know if there were any messages slash guidance for him. All right, follow your dreams, follow your excitement, be who you are, be yourself, become the one, become the one consciousness you came here to be, expand outwardly, push the limits of your reality, push yourself to the edge the edge of your fears, the edge of your doubts. And at this point, you will overcome the boundaries. When you dive deep into those fears that are holding you back from expanding into more of who you are, that are holding you back from expanding into more of who you came to be, you will, in a sense, pop up into a new reality. As you reach that, that edge, that edge of your consciousness, the limitation of the bubble reality you have created yourself, where the fears feel most strongest, the fears feel most terrifying, the fears feel most contracting. You have reached the point where you are about to pop out into the new reality. So push the boundaries of your reality. Push the boundaries of your expansion. Push the boundaries of your creation. And know that when you die, push yourself out, expand your consciousness into your fears, embrace your fears. Align with who you are, redefine those fears, bring them back into alignment with who you are. It will allow you to bubble up, to pop out into the new level of your consciousness, the new level of your reality. So embrace your fears. Embrace those discordant beliefs that bring you ideas of embarrassment, lack of self-worth, discordant vibrations you no longer prefer to be. Embrace them, transcend them, become the new, become the excited, vibrational, synchronous, ecstatic version of yourself you came here to be. Beautiful. Ex Excellent. Can I um, ask the question now? Go ahead. I was um, wondering about how to trans transform from my current vibration of mostly having struggle and not having enough money for food and stuff like that to um, follow my passion and do healing full time. What kind of guidance can you give me to translate from all the information that you've given me to follow my joy and bliss? And what kind of things can you um, recommend to do this for that specific thing to to be to have an income from full time healing and helping helping out? 
Well, it's, it's really just a case of redefining your beliefs, yoking them in, bringing them back into center with who you are, looking at those beliefs that are holding you back, beliefs that it has to be a struggle, beliefs that I have to struggle and strive to stay alive, and see that this is just a belief, and your belief is creating your reality. Do you understand the idea that our beliefs create our reality? Uh, yes. All right. So you understand it's a process of redefining those beliefs that are holding you back from moving towards the path, the excitement you prefer, yes? Yeah? Okay. So you need to identify those beliefs one by one that are holding you back. The belief that it has to be a struggle. The belief that I have to strive. The belief that the finances, the abundance won't flow to me if I embark upon this path of expansion, the path of creation, who it is and truth. I truly came here to become and say to yourself, well, my reality has supported me for so long in a path that has not been who I truly am. So why wouldn't my reality support me in being who I truly am, who I came here to be? Because you understand that you, you came here with a specific purpose, a specific mission, and that is your excitement, yes? Yes. So why would your creation, why would not you as the creator support yourself in the reality that you came here to create? When you have supported yourself for so long in a reality you did not desire to create. This is yeah. a question you can ask yourself that may help untangle your old beliefs, but it is just a case of redefining those beliefs. Look at those beliefs that are holding you back. When you come to the point of saying, right, I'm going to do it. Today, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stop off the edge. I'm going to go for it in my highest excitement, my purpose, and my calling. I'm going to become who I came here to become. When you get to that threshold and the fear comes up, the fear comes up and you say, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Notice the belief. What is creating the fear? What is the belief saying? Is it saying, no, it's too easy. It can't be true. Life is a struggle. It can't be that. Is it saying, I won't have the money to pay my bills? Is it saying, yeah. no one will love me? If I become who I am, I will be rejected. I will be an outcast from my circle of friends, from my pack. What are the fears that come up from stop you from moving forward? Okay. Identify those beliefs. And see they have nothing to do with who you are. See, they have nothing to do with why you are here. And redefine them, yoke them back in, bring them back into center, become who you are, realign, redefine, become, become, become more of who you are, more of your excitement, more of your joy, more of your passion, more of your alignment with the understanding that you are infinitely deserving of all the abundance in creation to support you in your service to creation, which is your excitement, that you are deserving of all the love and the light in the universe. That you are deserving, you are worthy of anything you desire to create. Bring your beliefs back into yoke, back into center, with this understanding that your higher self holds for you, and you will see your reality unfold in a dramatically different way. Does this help? Yes, it does. I will re listen to this again and again. Thank you, Shiva. Much love. See you. We love you too. I have a couple more questions from YouTube. Um, Jenny D wants to know, how can I know if I have shifted to a new timeline? Well, your circumstances have changed, yes? Understand that you are always shifting to new timelines, moment to moment. Every instant is a new timeline. Every instant is a new reality. The question is not really... How do I know if I have shifted to a new timeline? How do I know if I have shifted to a new reality? The question is, how do I know if I have shifted to a reality I prefer? And you know, because you are seeing reflections coming back to you of the reality you prefer. So, shouldn't this be obvious? For the idea of shifting to a new timeline is the idea of getting reflections back to you of the infinite creator that you prefer, that you are more akin to what you prefer to experience. So, are you experiencing what you prefer to see? Are the reflections reflective of who you are, the reality you prefer to experience? And if not, why not? If not, what are you holding on to in yourself that are reflecting back circumstances that you don't prefer? 
and choose the vibration that you too prefer. And you will accelerate more and more into a timeline you prefer. But the timeline is the reflection. So it, it should be obvious if you have shifted into a reality you prefer, because you will be in the reality you prefer. Is there a more specific way we can explore this idea for you? Um, she is not in the room right now, so I cannot. All right. And we would also suggest that it is a case of staying in the vibration you prefer. If you do not see the timeline you prefer manifesting around you, know that it is coming. Know that the reflection, in a sense, the first reflection is in you. Check to see what vibrational state is happening in, in me. For if you are still seeing a reality in your outer reality, reflected back to you that you do not prefer, it could be an echo, an echo of past vibrations. So the first step is to tune into your inner vibrational frequency, the reflection in yourself of your shift in beliefs, your shift in definitions, your realignment with who you truly are, and check in. The most important thing is not to look to your outer reality to, shift, to, to gain a gauge of how you are doing, but check in with yourself. How do I feel? Do I feel joyful? Do I feel relaxed? Do I feel blissful? Do I feel peaceful? Do I feel aligned? Do I feel fulfilled? Do I feel expansive? Do I feel creative? Do I feel compassionate? Do I feel loving? Do I feel serene? If you are experiencing these things within yourself, yet you are still seeing discordant vibrations in your outer reality, understand it's an echo. It's a vibrational resonance of past beliefs. So do not lose hope. Do not say, oh, this isn't working, I give up, I might as well just go back to what was doing before. Understand it's coming, it will come. But understand you must not need it to. But when you need it to, you are blocking it from manifesting. Know that all that matters is that you are aligned in yourself. You are the joy, the bliss, and the ecstasy in yourself. And you do not need anything else because you already are perfect. You already know you are the entirety of creation. You already know you are deserving of all the love, light, wisdom, and bliss in creation. You can experience this in any moment at your choosing if you define your reality this way. And do not need your outer reality to reflect. And paradoxically, that is the case where you will shift timelines dramatically and create the outer reality you prefer. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Is there, any, is there anyone in the room that had a question? Or I read another YouTube question. All right. Kina would like to know, can we unlock one mental belief without dissolving the frequency linked to this belief? I don't even understand. No, no. <laughs> the frequency is created by the belief. The belief creates the frequency. Okay. So when you unlock the belief, the frequency will automatically dissolve. Don't worry about the frequency. The frequency is the reflection of the belief. So focus on redefining the belief, and the frequency will automatically unlock itself. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Shiva. Um, Tracy Hunter says, hello, Yayal, and hello, my children. I am ready to create and co-create something new and fun. Any of y'all want to play? <laughs> we always want to play. We are always ready to play. Anyone that wants to play with us, you are welcome in our reality. Play is what we love to do. Invite us in. Invite us into your dreams. Invite us into your meditations. Invite us into your astral plane of existence. However you wish to create with us. When the word play is involved, we're there. Super. I think that's it from YouTube. Um, if there's anyone in the room who has a question, go ahead and ask it. Anyone want to play? Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Do you want to play with us? Absolutely. I was actually going to ask, um, how do you become more visual during meditation? Because I'm I'm very clear cognizant, but I would like to be more visual. All right. Play with the idea of aligning your frequency.
becoming more of who you are, become more playful in your reality. For it's a case of becoming more of who you are, living more in the moment. For when you are aligned with the present moment, you are of the vibrational frequency of who you are. All layers of your reality become more available to you when you are who you are, living in the present moment, not looking to the past or the future for fulfillment, just being here, resonant in the now, in this one vibrational field of focus, in your alignment, in your joy, in your bliss, in your ecstasy, following your calling, your passion, your purpose, your highest excitement, moment to moment, to the best of your ability, which allows you to become more centered, more present, more focused in the here and now. For here and now is all that exists. When you are not lost in the future, in your mind's projections to the future, your worries about your past, your future, your misalignments, when you are not locked into these discordant vibrations that have nothing to do with who you truly are, when you are grounded in your joy, your bliss, your expansion, your creativity in the present moment, centered in the present moment, centered in your being, you are who you truly are. For when there is no one home, in a sense, these vibrations you wish to connect with cannot enter your reality. For you are thinking about the past or thinking about the future and completely lost in some time space illusion that doesn't exist. But when you're grounded in the present, when you're in the here and now, when you're focused as yourself, when you're in your being, in your consciousness, you see, you sense, you can sense into the vibration of field that I exist here and I am all of creation and I exist here and now and I am all aspects of creation coexisting here and now. And when you sense into that idea that all exists here and now as me, that I am all existing coexisting here and now in this vibrational field that I am, which pertains to all of creation. This is what will allow you to become more visual, to become more aligned with those aspects of yourself that are at present slightly on a different frequency, slightly discordant from your current vibrational range. You can know that it all exists here and now as me. All these vibrations, all these experiences I wish to experience are me. Here and now, here and now, here and now, I ground, I become myself. I become one with my true nature. I become one with the universe. I become one with who I am. I know, I sense, I feel in every bone in my body. I feel in every cell in my structure that I am the vibrational relevance of resonance of all that is. I am the resonant field of all of creation. I am the one creator. I know this. I sense this. I feel it in every cell of my body. And from here, you become yourself. You become the creator. You become the chakra system that awakens. You become the chakra system that aligns. You become your true self, your true nature. You light up. Your balls of energy, your energy vortices, your energy expressions within your center of consciousness align in the present moment as you allow them to. As you become more of who you are, as you become the resonant field of creation, your chakra system lights up. You become the chakras, you become the light, you become the love, you become the one consciousness. And this will allow you to vibrationally tune to the visual states you require. Does this make sense? Yes? Absolutely. It really does. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello, Shiva. Good day. Um, my name is Pete. Uh, it's Hello, nice Pete. to connect with you. Um, it's good to connect with you, too. <laughs> um, I have been mentioning about the previous statements and questions earlier um, based on the, uh, like, what goes on inside affects on the outside, but on my end, it feels like whenever I put out, there's like this um, sensitive feedback that I receive back from everything that's around me in a sense. And whenever I connect to a person or a place or a thing, it ends up like a cord or, a, or an attachment to it. Uh, 
I don't know if it's the mind that's doing that or if it's myself realizing that it's an experience that I must have in order to achieve a certain goal. Um, if I'm coming in clearly enough for this kind of Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Having a sense, answered your own question already, have you not? Yes. So you, you know that it is the need, the want, the desperate need to create what you need to create to create some value of worth for yourself. Could it be that you feel you are not worthy and somehow you need to prove yourself to your fellow, fellow humans? So you are saying, I am going to manifest all this to prove them that I am better. All this time they've been telling me I'm not worthy, I'm a loser. I don't deserve this, but well, I'm going to show them. I'm going to manifest to such an epic reality. They will be quaking in their boots to see what a powerful manifester I am. And this comes from a need perspective. It comes from a lack perspective. The idea that you need love from your fellow humans, from your fellow compatriots. You need to create something to create love in your reality, to create love in your dimension. But when you understand that you do not need to do anything, for you are the love, you are the light, you are the creator, you are the core of existence itself. And you are infinitely worthy of all that you desire. And you are infinitely desirous of all that is relevant for you to create. For if you truly know, need, feel a desire to create something, it comes from a perspective of your higher mind. When you are not coming from a fear-based belief, the fear that you will not experience love from your fellow humans, that you will not be seen as worthy of love from your fellow humans if you do not succeed in creating a bountiful reality. When you no longer come from this perspective and know that you need to create nothing, know that you are a perfect individual, know that you are worthy of all the love and the light and creation and you let go, of the need to create anything, because you see that all exists inside you already. You are the entirety of creation. And why would you need something in your reality if you are the entire reality? When you come from this perspective, when you truly align with your heart's desire, the way your higher self desires to create in your reality, there will be no need. It's merely an expression of joy, an expression of fun, an expression of abundance, an expression of creativity, an expression of play. When you come into the idea of play, playing with your reality, play with the clay, be playful. So what if it doesn't manifest? What's the worst thing that's going to happen if I don't manifest this? So what? So what? So what? And ask yourself, why do I fear not being able to manifest this? What do I fear will happen if I can't manifest this? And identify that belief. Does it have to do with proving something to other people? Does it have to do with fear that you cannot experience joy and bliss and love and creativity and abundance if you do not have that object? Identify the belief. What is the fear that comes up? Does this make sense? Is this helping? Was this reflecting on your question? Yes, it is in a more direct manner of speaking. Um, yeah, and I've been feeling that since when I was like, going all my life in a sense that I had to prove myself for it. It's more or show others that I can prove that I can accomplish this without your help in a sense. And some forms I do, in some cases I do I ask for help, but some other times I, I feel that there's like a, a set of restrictions that I've been feeling all right. Um, what do you fear you will lack if you are not able to prove yourself to these beings? What is the fear that drives the need for proof from proving yourself? What do you fear will happen if you don't prove yourself? I would be trapped in a never-ending cycle of, of others trying to how you would see it as a sheep, a sheep or or some fat form animal that's has a corral and the 
the fences that are like the, in a sense, like uh, circumstance represent the circumstances and the people that say you can't do this or try to do this thing. Um, and also even the universe mentioning that of letting your, if self letting your life happen to you in a sense. That is one of the bits of my fear out of that. All right. And so what? So what if this reality creates? It's an exciting expression of creation, isn't it? Lots of crazy people penning you in, defining you in a strange way. What's it got to do with you? Because other people cannot pen you in. You can only pen yourself in. You create your own reality. You are saying these people are going to pen me in. I'm going to be defined by these people. These people are going to decide how I experience my reality. And you're creating that reality. But when you understand that you are the only one that defines how you experience your reality, you can have every being on the planet telling you you are a loser, telling you you do not worth anything, telling you you do not worth any love. But if you knew who you truly are, if you saw yourself as we see you, you would see so clearly that you are worthy of all the loving creation. You are worthy of all the light, abundance, bliss, creativity, desires in existence. Because we see you as you truly are. We see you as the divine being that you are. We see you as infinitely worthy of love, infinitely worthy of life, infinitely worthy of all you desire to create. And if you came to see yourself as we see you, as creation see you, as creation birthed you to be, as you, if you came to see yourself as this, it would not matter what any being in reality projected on you because you would see that this is not relevant for me. This is their beliefs. This is their projections. This has nothing to do with me. This cannot affect me, but only I affect me. I know I am infinitely worthy. I know that I am loved. I know that I am desirous of joy and I am worthy of abundance and manifesting this in my reality. And as you stayed in this frequency, the ability for those others to project into your reality would disappear because you would shift frequency and you shift to a reality where they no longer exist. But it's the idea of tuning in for them not needing to disappear, for seeing that they can't affect you because only you affect you. And their beliefs are just their beliefs. Does this make sense? Does this help? It does. It does. Um, yeah, because that's been with me for quite a while, the, the events and circumstances that I've been searching for answers, so to speak. Um, yeah, that helps me uh, to fit in another puzzle to the puzzle piece, so to speak. We thank you for permitting yourself to put that puzzle piece into place. <laughs> so we wanted to go ahead and wind it up. Um, wind it up, wind away. <laughs> we thank you so much for coming in and uh, sharing your knowledge and uh and we share our heartfelt gratitude um all right but we would suggest that it's not our knowledge it is just knowledge and you can all access this knowledge whenever you wish if you believe you can access this knowledge but knowledge is akin to creation knowledge is akin to who you are so when you rest in your being, align with who you are, your true self, your true nature, all the knowledge in creation that is relevant for your creation is available to you. So it is not our knowledge, it is your knowledge. For we can only reflect back to you what you already know. And when you know that you already know, and when you know that you can know what you need to know, when you need to know it, you will know it when you need to know it. All right? Yes. It's your knowledge. Okay. It, it's your knowledge. We're just reflecting back your knowledge. All yes, right? I know. Thank, Thank you. you. Did you want to leave Thank us you. with a blessing? Yes, we leave you with a blessing. We are always blessing your civilization. We always send you our blessings. Our love is always emanating from our craft into your reality. 
we are always sending the love and the light of the infinite creator that we know we are and we wish you to see that you are we are always sending this love sending this vibrational field sending this blessing from our starships into your reality in the hope that one day you will see yourselves in the love and the light and the infinite knowledge that you are deserving of all the love and light in creation how we see ourselves we hope you see yourselves this way earth humans and we bless you and we bless you and we bless you and we bless that you will see this for yourselves that you are love you are light you are the infinite love light of creation you are the infinite creator you are so worthy you are so loved you are all beings of love. You are all beings of divine heritage. And we wish you to know this, for we see you as this. We do not see you as that muddle of thoughts, that muddle of patterns that keep looping around like an out of control washing machine all day long. So come to see yourselves as we see you and see that while we bless you every day, you only need to bless yourselves with the remembrance of who you are. Thank you very much, love too. Thank you. We love you too. Always unconditional. Much love. Much love, love to, you. to you. Shibai. Shibai, Earth humans. Welcome to a new reality. Welcome to a new door. Welcome to a new day, a new expression of the consciousness creators of who you are. Have a wonderful day, Earth humans. Shibai, good day. That face is priceless. Who is it? <laughs> Welcome back. Hi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Michelle, do you want to do your, your blessing? Sure. Anyone else? I have a blessing. Go ahead. Okay. We have Rohoi, he see her, Varia Mana Horia, her, Nadia Tatayaka, hear her, Rahoya, her, Yaka, hear her, Varia has here, we are Horia. Be here, Kaisi, Kohori, see here, ha, Maria, Hoa, ha, near Haya, near Hata. Blessings. Thank you. Jonathan, do you have any uh, languages for us? Um. I could do a quick toning if you like. Go ahead. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Good. 
May you follow your hearts and find the peace and love you desire. Much love. Thank you. Anyone else? Marco. Go ahead. Blessings to everyone on earth. I love you big time. I love you much. And I will be here for you all. Thank you. All right, with that, we conclude. Thank you, everyone, for co-creation of this webinar. And we will see you soon next Saturday, same time. And thank you, Jonathan, for starting. Thank you. All right. Good day, everybody. Same bad channel. Same bad. Bye-bye. Thank you.